This is the uh, USS Pampanito, and it was a World War II type submarine. And uh, if you want to see it, go up to San Francisco. If you don't want to see it, you can do like I do, did, and just get on the website here, and uh, you can do a pretty good video look at what was on a World War II type submarine and uh, I served on a couple of these and uh, I was on the USS Sarda SS-488 and the USS Sea Owl SS-405 and I'll show you a picture of the Sea Owl here in just a minute but anyway on the Sarda I slept back in the after torpedo room and I slept up way up above where the torpedoes were and everything else and it was quite handy and it, and then I'll show you a couple pictures of it but when that uh, battle stations torpedo would sound I had to get way up there to the conning tower because that's where my battle station was and so this is I'm just going to show you where I had to go through the submarine to do this and uh, first of all this is this is where I slept right up there you know and uh, it was nice because when I was on the Sea Owl, I slept up in the after battery, and it was supposed to be a more uh, better place. But good God, it was everybody was up there. Well, you'll see when we go through the after battery. A lot of bunks up there. Back here, there was just the four bunks up there, just like it is here, and the four spare torpedoes and the torpedoes tubes were on that. That ladder or stairway going up there that wasn't on the submarine. That was something they put in for visitors afterwards, you know because uh, that was not there. There was a ladder there, but it was back where that round thing is, and it was, you know, but we didn't use it when we were out sea. Now this is the torpedo tubes that were just right behind me, and you see the little rollers in there where they'd roll in the uh, extra torpedoes and load the tubes with it and all that. And that was fine, but I'm just showing you that because that's where I slept. And so now, again, this is where I slept, and uh, if you see that thing up there, that square box with a little petcock on it, that was a splash box, and they had those around there to catch the stuff coming down, and boy, I made sure I'd emptied that thing every couple of days. They, they'd emptied it, but uh, I, I didn't trust them to get mine emptied real good. It was kind of a, a long haul to get up into that bunk, but it was all right. I got used to it, and I wanted to show this is because this is the way that doors were between each compartment. Each compartment had a door and you could seal it so each compartment was watertight. If one compartment got flooded you could shut it off and uh, you know seal up the ship. Now in the maneuvering room the submarine ran on electrical power. The primary source of course was the diesel engine but attached to the diesel engine was a generator and the generator power, the current was those little levers down there would determine where that current went to, whether it went to the motors to drive the sh submarine or it went to the battery to be stored and all the other things use it. And this is a picture of the diesel engines with the generators, you know, and this is looking aft. And so you have the two diesels in each engine room, there would be two diesel engines and uh, two generators attached to them. Now, I showed this because on the right and left there you can see, but on the right a little bit better is uh, where they would start and stop the engine. And they've got it open there to see that. So, you know, it started with uh, compressed air. It turned that diesel over until it got started and then they'd hit her and run and go on. So this is the uh, forward engine room, which is more or less the same. We just they got a lot of different stuff in there and, and it, it, when you qualified on submarines you had to learn where all this stuff was at and learn how to turn the valves and do all that stuff. <coughs> so anyway, we're there we're in the now going, coming from the uh, forward engine room into the for after battery compartment uh, is where the heads were. You know there was the two toilets and five or six sinks and uh, you know, you didn't want to sit on the toilet too long because uh, there'd be guys lining up. Anyway, and so we're looking uh, aft now to where those things were from in the after battery compartment. This is where most of the crew slept there. You can see all the bunks lined up there, and most of them would sleep there. Now, if you will just turn around and look the other way, that uh, there's more bunks, but then on the right there is where the sink was 
and if you look on the left, we're going to look at just a minute, this is where the crew's mess was. Uh, I mean, the galley was there to where the cook and he cooked up some meals and stuff. And then there's some tables and stuff there in where you could set down and uh, that's where you had the things. And of course we have that large coffee pot there right in the middle and uh, we drank a lot of coffee. So and they'd always keep some fresh coffee going and it was pretty good coffee. That Navy coffee was all right. Now, when we go into the control room, if you will notice, and this is on the starboard, the right hand side in the control room, this is where the chief of the watch would stand and uh, he'd have an exorient with him and they'd operate the valves and everything to keep the air and water distributed uh, around the submarine so that it would float okay and this is where the guys that were the lookouts normally when you were on the surface they'd come down here and they'd operate the bow planes and the stern planes and of course the bow planes in front stern planes in the left and that was the ladder that went up to the conning tower and that's where I would be going. I'd be going up to the conning tower and this was my battle station. Did you see those two things with the circular stuff? Those were the old type <coughs> radars. The newer ones looked a little different. But anyways the same thing and of course that thing right there with in the right that's the periscope you know. the That was the after periscope. That was the one and the guy would be on battle stations he'd be operating that and I'd have to stay out of his way a little bit and, but still give him information if he wanted. Now if we look forward that was where the helmsman was. He'd steer the ship you know go left or right. Those guys down below would make it go up and down. Uh, but anyway the helmsman would be there and that's the number one scope you're looking at there. And so here's where the helmsman would be and so on your right there, that ladder going up, that would go up to the bridge and that's where the officer of the deck and the lookouts would come down when you dove and they'd go down below. And uh, the helms would stand there and he'd go left or right or whatever they wanted to do. And <coughs> so that was that before we looked at that ladder going up into the conning tower. This is the hatch that would go down into the conning, into the control room from the conning tower. And so Anyway, when you dive, those officer of the deck and the lookouts would dive down there, and then he becomes, he'd still be the officer, but he wasn't the officer of the deck, he would be the diving officer, and then the lookouts would be the operators of the planes, you know, forward planes and the after plane, and so that's the way it was.